All right, everyone, welcome to the Tonto's Demise Week 5 Recap. Uh, this one, I guess, coming to you a little bit early, earlier than usual, at least, um, because as it hap so happens, um, Week 5 is technically still not over, as, I'm, as I speak. Um, not even any... <laughs> I've lost any interest in <laughs> tonight's game for obvious reasons, but uh, every matchup has already been decided. So there's really no reason to put off anything here much later. Might as well just jump right into it. I'm not. So obviously, obviously the um, final scores won't be exact for several people, but um, it doesn't really matter, I guess, because we know the winners and what your records are going to be. So that's really. <laughs> I mean, does it, anything else really matter other than that right now? So, um, all right. Might as well just jump right into this. <laughs> uh, first matchup of the week is the defending champion Springfield Isotopes going up against the Huber Squashers. Uh, the current score we have is, let's see, Springfield Isotopes, their final is 173.05, while the Huber Squashers currently at, let's see, 189.45. I haven't refreshed my browser recently, so that's wherever we're at. Um, who knows, his total uh, totals might change here between uh, when I say it, whenever I say it here and uh, between when I finish. So um, uh, let's see. We had Huber Squashers, quarter versus Isotopes, quarterbacks, Fitzpatrick versus Rivers, Rivers 52 to Fitzpatrick. Uh, about 42 and a half. Wide receivers, we had Huber Squashers, Amari Cooper, Jordy Nelson, and Chris Hogan. Going up against Jarvis Landry, Randall Cobb, and Philip Dorsett. Cooper finally showed up uh, this for the first time, I think, this year. He had almost 28 points. Jordy Nelson didn't do too much, but of course kept his touchdown streak alive. So he's got one every week so far this year. He was just under 14, and Hogan, he had four catches, but went, those, those went for 114 yards, so he had 15.4 points for you, so it looks like a grand total of about 56, 57 points from your three receivers, while for the isotopes, uh, geez, Landry, six points, Dorsett, four and a half, uh, Randall Cobb actually just under 20, so a little over 30 points from those three receivers combined. Um, let's see, pretty much the day saved by Randall Cobb on that. Um, let's see, running backs. This one was completely dominated by the Isotopes as LeGarrette Blunt and Terrence West. Uh, Blunt went for almost 10, and so did West. Um, so they got about 20 there. As for the Huber Squashers running backs, he had Matt Jones and Kenneth Dixon. Uh, Jones had 30 yards and he lost a fumble, so you only got one point there. And Dixon actually finished with negative yardage, minus one, so you actually got uh, one point combined from your two running backs. Uh, it, one of the frustrating things, I think, for this match, well... <laughs> One of them, it, frustrating things for this matchup, is that when I was watching the uh, box scores on Sunday afternoon, and Terrence West had something like 60 yards rushing in the first quarter, and then they stopped giving them the ball. <laughs> and every time he ran the ball, he was getting huge chunks of yardage. And I think today, um, the Ravens offensive coordinator, Trestman, <laughs> got fired, and they hired somebody else. So hopefully... Uh, that will change with the uh, Ravens offense going forward a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, tight ends, Huber Squashers. He has Greg Olson, who he needed to get about 13.5 points from on Monday night to cover the margin that he was trailing by. And currently, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have forgotten that he's on the field because Greg Olson has nearly 200 yards receiving. <laughs> Uh, 9 for 181 is what it has right now. I'm just 
I that I don't even know what to say. That's ridiculous. Um, Jordan Reed, thirteen and a half points. Uh, Olsen right now has thirty. Uh, flex plays. We had Gio Bernard up against Demarco Murray. Uh, Murray over twenty points again, just under twenty two. While Bernard had about fifteen and a half. Uh, looks like he had. Um, he only had 50 yards rushing, but he did add 10 and a half points from receiving. Uh, so good thing he was in your flex there, which I think he's been pretty much every week this year. Uh, let's see. Kickers, Boswell, a couple of PATs and a field goal. Tucker, same thing. Actually, only one uh, only one field goal and one PAT from him. Uh, let's see. And then defenses. This is where the matchup really swung in favor of the Huber squashers here. Besides Greg Olson, uh, Buffalo's defense was at the Rams. They scored, uh, they had a couple of turnovers, a touchdown, uh, did pretty good. I believe the total was 28. But Tennessee Titans, they dominated the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins were absolutely <laughs> atrocious in this game, which also affected Jarvis Landry, obviously. Uh, Yahoo says 18, but the actual total, I'm pretty sure, was... 39. So great game from them. Uh, they had a couple turnovers, a lot of sacks. Um, I think you got six points from the first downs, six points from the from the rushing totals, and six more points from the passing totals. So you got, I think, an extra so an extra 21 points there, just from um, the the poor yardage totals there from the Miami Dolphins. So. That's enough for the Huber Squashers to get a win this week. Um, like I said, I don't know what their final total is going to be, but he moves up to 3-2, and two, while the Springfield Isotopes will drop to 1-4. and four. Next matchup we have going is New Gods Mad Titans versus the Detonators. Detonators looks like they're currently over just over 200 points. From thanks to Evans and Benjamin going tonight. Uh, let's see. While New Gods Mad Titans, he has 134.6. So <laughs> there's and he still has Graham Gano going right now, but I don't think his kicker is gonna make up those 70 points. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Detonators versus New Gods. We had Derek Carr versus Matthew Stafford. Carr actually took this one pretty easily, 52-40. to 40. Wide receivers, Detonators has Mike Evans, Larry Fitzgerald, and T.Y. Hilton. Just been a great combination so far here this year. Um, well, trio, I guess I should say. <laughs> uh, let's see, Evans currently, he, ha he has just under, just under 19 points. Fitzgerald caught two more touchdowns this week. Uh, 26 points for him, while well, Hilton... He had 10 catches, 170 yards, and a touchdown. So 36 points there. Uh, touchdowns all over the place this week from the detonators. Um, New God's wide receivers, he had Marvin Jones, Alshon Jeffrey, and Anunwa from the Jets. Is, it, is his first name Quincy, I believe, right? Yeah, Quincy Anunwa. Uh, let's see. Jones. 13.7, Jeffrey 12.7, and Anunwa 9. So you got about 35 points there from your three wide receivers. But uh, T.Y. Hilton covered that just by himself uh, as uh, detonators. What, what was your total from your wide receiver? Let's see, 62. 80, almost 90 points, probably. Oh, more than 80 points from your <laughs> wide receiver trio, which is ridiculous. Uh, running backs, pretty good matchup here, actually. We had, for detonators, Jordan Howard and Ryan Matthews, while Titans had Melvin Gordon and uh, Le'Veon Bell. Detonators, um, let's see, 118 rushing yards from Howard. Uh, you don't get don't obviously you don't get his receiving stats, but he did catch a touchdown, which counts for you. As did Ryan Matthews, he didn't get too much on the ground, but he did catch a touchdown. 
So touchdown's a touchdown there. Uh, so about 11 and 20. So about 30, a little over 30 points from your running backs. As for new gods, Gordon, he, <laughs> well, he, had rece- he also had a receiving touchdown. 70 yards rushing, and he did lose a fumble. Um, and Le'Veon Bell, Yahoo says <laughs> Yahoo has him at 24.4 points, but you only actually got 6.6 points because you lost <laughs> uh, almost 18 points by not having him in the flex, uh, which <laughs> uh, you're <laughs> if uh. <laughs> I would say uh, that Ling's already bald, but if he wasn't, he'd be ripping his the rest. He'd be ripping his hair out right now, over <laughs> over you not putting Le'Veon Bell in the flex position. Uh, anyway, uh, back to it. Gronk versus Tammy. Gronk finally showed up uh, 16 points this week, while Tammy had one. Uh, currently, flex plays Kelvin Benjamin. He's currently at 12. While Terrell Pryor Sr., he was just over 11. Kickers, Janikowski, um, he kicked a bunch of field goals. I think he had about 15 or 16 points. And Graham Gano is currently sitting at one point, thanks to his missed field goal. Defenses, we had the Rams for detonators. Uh, they did okay. They blocked a the kick, had a couple sacks, actually. I think Yahoo says eight. It actually... I think it was either 8 or 11. That might be right. Uh, Philadelphia for New Gods Mad Titans. They had a couple sacks and a turnover, but they lost the game, gave up a lot of yardage. Uh, So Yahoo says 10. Um, I want to say it was closer to 13 or 16, maybe a little somewhere somewhere around there. But um, yeah, as currently stands, the detonators, like I said, they are 70 points ahead of New Gods Mad Titans. Uh, 134 to 204. So, detonators, they will end their three game losing streak. They will move up to two and three, while the new gods, Mad Titans, will drop to three and two. All right, the next matchup is Everybody Ertz versus the Mighty Midgets. And currently, we have Mighty Midgets about 30 points ahead of Everybody Ertz. Who, let's see, Ertz finished with, uh, let's see, 128.3, while Mighty Midgets currently have 156.65. He has the Carolina Panthers defense still going, but he, with everybody Ertz being finished, he is guaranteed to get the victory here, so it doesn't quite matter. Uh, let's see, quarterbacks, Midgets had Aaron Rodgers versus Carson Wentz for... Everybody Ertz. Um, let's see. Rogers just under 40, while Wentz had a little bit over 40, about 43.3. Uh, wide receivers. Mighty Midgets had Crowder. Uh, is it Bryce Butler? I'm not even really sure. And Dontrell Inman from the Chargers for his three receivers. Uh, <laughs> these guys did next to nothing receiving wise. The only uh, saving grace here was actually Jamison Crowder returning a punt for an 85-yard touchdown, I believe, which got you nine points there since it was a long touchdown. Other than that, said without those nine points, Crowder would have only gotten you three and a half, but he got you 12 and a half, while Butler got you four, and Inman got you uh, 1.3. So less than 20 points from your three receivers combined. Uh, let's see, Ertz, he had Crabtree, Brandon Marshall, and John Brown. Crabtree, another touchdown for him on three catches, um, 13.7. Marshall, touchdown, eight catches, over 100 yards for him. He had just over 25, but John Brown only had one catch for 11 yards. So it looks like your total was about 39, 40 from your three receivers. So... Uh, This contest, so far, obviously is in favor of everybody Ertz, actually. Uh, But then (laughs) then the pendulum swings back over to Mighty Midgets here as we get to the running backs. As he had Forte and Carlos Hyde. 
Forte didn't do too much, though. 50 yards rushing, Hyde 78, and he did score a touchdown. So that got you about 18 points from your running backs. While everybody Ertz, in his two running back positions, he had both Atlanta uh, running backs who did most of their damage in the receiving game this week. So Coleman, he actually had 132 yards receiving. He did catch a touchdown, but you lost all those receiving yards and catches. Um, Yahoo says 26. I think uh, it was, uh, what was it? I think it was closer to like 10, thanks to cutting off all those receiving yards. As for Devontae Freeman, he also scored a touchdown. He had 88 rushing yards, so you got 14 points from him. Not too bad. So a total of about, I think I would guess, like 25 from your two running backs. Still pretty good. Um, but then Mighty Midgets had Delaney Walker versus Zach Ertz at tight end. Uh, Walker, these guys actually had fairly similar receiving stats, but um, Walker scored a touchdown, making the difference here. Uh, 17 to 6, 17 to 7. Flex play. This one, this is definitely where this <laughs> this matchup swung over to Mighty Midgets. As we know from the Thursday night game, David Johnson, he had two touchdowns over 150 yards rushing, uh, 36 and a half points from him. While you plugged in Will Fuller, <laughs> it looks like a week too late in your flex. He caught one pass for four yards. Uh, so <laughs> 36 to four, thir- uh, not eight, 36 to one there. Um, kickers, Sturgis for Midgets, Novak for Ertz. Sturgis had, I think, three field goals and uh, maybe a couple PATs. While Novak looks like he had a couple field goals, uh, only one PAT. Uh, let's see. Yahoo says 14 to 6 in favor of Sturgis. While finally, defenses, Carolina Panthers currently going up. Against Tampa Bay, Yahoo has them at 8 right now. Uh, looks like they only have 2 sacks. They've given up 14 points. As for the Houston Texans defense, um, they were at Minnesota. They got beat pretty badly. Uh, Yahoo looks like they say 2. I believe it was like 5 maybe. Something like that. But anyway, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so those... Um, let's see, like I said, everybody Ertz was winning this matchup uh, through quarterbacks and receivers, but uh, it was fair, and I think they might have actually taken uh, the running back spot too here, but it was the 10-point difference from the tight ends and the 35-point difference from the flex play that swung this one over to Mighty Midgets. Uh, like I said, everybody Ertz, his score was 128.3. He will drop to 3-2, and two, while the Midgets will move up to 3-2. and two. He and he is currently at 156.65. So we'll get that total figured out for sure here as soon as the game's over. Next matchup, we have the Dub C Hooligans going up against Possum Magic. Uh, I think this one is actually the only one that was actually finished going into Monday night, so they were done on Sunday. Possum Magic took this one down. Final score here, 173.2 to Dub C, 139.5. Quarterbacks, we had an AFC North battle, Roethlisberger versus Flacco. Uh, Flacco, 30, Flacco had 30 completions, but only two, just over 200 yards. Kind of surprising there, but 45 points from him. But Ben Roethlisberger, uh, he had four more completions than Flacco with 34, but he was just under 400 yards passing and four touchdowns, including a long one to Sammy Coates. So 73 points uh, of your, so 73 of your 173 came from just from Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Let's see. Wide receivers. Possum has A.J. Green, Cole Beasley, and Tejon Sharp. Uh, Green, 9 points. Beasley, 15. Sharp, 3.7. 
It's not too so quite another quiet game from AJ Green, but I think like I, I kind of mentioned last week, you get those quiet games from somebody, and then a huge game from somebody else always seems to work out that way. Uh, so let's see, uh, just under a little bit under thirty points from your three receivers combined, while Dub C, Steve Smith, six points, then he got hurt, I believe. Uh, Sanders and even fifteen, and Jordan Matthews. Ten and a half points, so a little over thirty combined from your three receivers. Running backs, we had Crowell and Jeremy Hill for Possum. Uh, looks like Crowell only had twenty-two rushing yards, and Hill only had twelve. So you got less than four points combined from your two running backs. While the Dubsy Hooligans did not fare much better, as he started Eddie Lacy and Wendell Smallwood. Uh, Lacey did get 80 yards, and Smallwood got absolutely nothing. So, a total of 8 points from your two running backs. Tight ends, we had a decent matchup here. Barnage versus Hunter Henry. Uh, again, fairly similar receiving stats, except Henry caught a touchdown. Final uh, difference here was 12.6 to 16.4. Flex plays, we had... Darren Sproles versus Lamar Miller. Tough matchup for Miller going up against the Minnesota defense, which was being played by Possum Magic here. Uh, Miller could only manage three and a half points, while Sproles for Possum looks like he had 45 rushing yards and caught a couple passes for 20 yards or so. 10.8 points from him. Your kickers were pretty much even. Walsh versus Lambeau. Uh, six versus seven, according to Yahoo. Defenses, uh, <laughs> great matchup here actually from defenses, Arizona versus Minnesota. I think Arizona, Yahoo says 24, but they did pretty well. Their total I think was actually, uh, I want to say 30, 33, something like that, which was almost the same and ended up being for Minnesota. Uh, Yahoo says 19, I think it was like 31 or 33, something like that. <laughs> so... Ben Roethlisberger and the Minnesota Vikings defense combined to score about 105, maybe 106 of Possum Magic's 173 points there. So, yeah, uh, just so over over 100 points from just the the quarterback and the uh, defense means pretty much the rest of your team. They just they just have to show up and maybe contribute a little bit. <laughs> For the for your team to get a win uh, that that week, because a said so hundred points just from those two uh, means you're probably going to be pushing two hundred points overall for the week, which Possum Magic probably would have done if a couple of his guys would have had uh, better matchups or performed a little bit better. Um, but it's enough to get a win, and that's all that matters. While Possum Magic, he will move up to actually four and one. I think he will be alone in first place now. Which uh, I think has pretty been t- been pretty typical for this point over the last couple of seasons. While the Dubsy Hooligans, he was also three and one, but unfortunately, you will drop to three and two. Uh, I said one thirty nine point five to one seventy three point two. And the next matchup looks like we have FC Bahork going up against Disco. Going into the night, Disco was down about 28 points. Uh, let's see. FC Bahoric, we have him at one. Uh, let's see. Looks like this game is now over. So uh, FC Bahoric's score should be correct. He is currently at 154.5. As for Disco, like I said, he had a 28-point margin of the, that he was trailing by. Um... So he, well, he had, FC Bohoric had Cameron Brait, who just got about almost five points, while uh, Disco had Jaquiz Rogers, who uh, looks like he actually went over 100 yards rushing, but no touchdowns or anything. So you got 13 points from him, tacked on to your 121.7 that you had before, which will move you up to, what, 134, something like that. Um, got to check and see 
if you survived the knockout pool or not. I think you and New Gods Mad Titans look like you're going to be pretty close. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, I will figure that out after I finish with the recap here, and I will post it in the. On the I'll probably put I'll put it on the lineup, and I'll put I'll, I'll definitely make sure I list it in the message board notice whenever I put up the recap video. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Disco, you do lose this matchup, and FC gets the win. Let's go through the team here. <laughs> Great quarterbacks. We had Brady versus Luck. Brady coming back from his suspension, as we all know, 66 and a half points from him, while Luck, he had 56. So good matchup there, 66 to 56. I think you'll take that total every week from your quarterbacks. Uh, let's see, wide receivers. Disco has Julio, he has Travis Benjamin, and Doriel Green-Beckham. Uh, Julio, 5 points, Benjamin, 18.7, and Beckham, uh, let's see, 7.3. So it looks like you got a, just about 30 points from your three wide receivers. While FC Bohoric, he had Deshaun Jackson, Mike Wallace, and Tyrell Williams from San Diego. Uh, so <laughs> both San Diego... Two of San Diego's wide receivers were head-to-head -head in this matchup. Uh, let's see. Jackson, he had 6.5. Wallace, 13.5. And, and Williams, he had over 100 yards and a touchdown. He got you 22.7. So it looks like you got a little over 40, a little bit over 40, 41, 42 from your three wide receivers. Um, running backs, we had Gurley. And Jaquiz going up against C.J. Anderson and James White. Looks like Gurley had 70 yards and a touchdown, so 13 points from him. Like I said, Jaquiz had over 100 yards, just over 100, and no touchdowns. So 13 points from each of your running backs is 26, while C.J. Anderson only 40 yards, and James White... Looks like he only had 26, so you got about 7 points from your two running backs. <laughs> the biggest, so the big problem here, for one of the big problems for FC Bohoric this year so far, is he's got all <laughs> pass-catching running backs, so knowing who to flex each week has been uh, a difficult choice for him. He went with Duke Johnson this week, uh, should have went with James White, but I mean, even CJ Anderson has been a pretty decent uh, flex running back here. So, uh, Tight ends, like I said, Brait had just under five. He, he, he only caught one pass, but it was for almost 40 yards. While Kyle Rudolph, not too much better. Two catches for 15 yards in that game. Quiet one from both of those guys. Uh, your flex players, like I said, Duke Johnson was in the flex for FC. He only got you, uh, he got you 4.2. While Brian Quick was picked, plugged and played by the Disco here, uh, he did three catches for 51 yards, so 8.1, which is not too much, but still twice as much as uh, FC Bohoric's flex play put up. Kickers, McManus versus Catanzaro. Uh, looks like the difference here was in favor of McManus as he kicked a bunch of field goals while Cat Hanzero kicked mostly PATs. Yahoo says 12 to 7 in favor of McManus. As for defenses, we had Baltimore versus San Francisco. Uh, looks like I think San Francisco only got like five points thanks to the low passing yardage total. Uh, other than that, thanks thanks to their only one sack and the uh, losing. They were actually down at, I think, negative two, and they got you <laughs> they got you back up to, maybe it was four, they got you back up into the positives, thanks to the uh, passing total. And Baltimore, they lost the game, they didn't do, they did, but they actually did okay, uh, had a couple turnovers, didn't give up a whole lot of points or yards, uh, Yahoo says 13, I think it was either 13 or maybe 16. Something around there. I can't remember for sure. But it was enough to get FC Bohoric a win this week, moving him up from 12th place. He will now be 
uh, I think tied with a couple other people at two and three. And Disco, well, well, actually he will drop to two and three also. So they'll both be tied for the same record. Um, not sure what place either one will be in for sure. But uh, Disco, he drops this one. FC Bohoric gets the win. Uh, final score would be 154.5 to what, Disco 134-ish? 134.8, I'm going to say, off the top of my head. I'll have to finalize that. Uh, as soon as I'm finished with this. Anyway, uh, one matchup left to go. Who was it? It was... From Gags to Riches. Going up against... Uh, let's see. Twerkin... The Twerkin Bowl Cuts. Uh, Gags to Riches. The Pony Boy. Uh, has been... After starting off 0-2, will probably stay at the top of Brian's, uh, <laughs> whatever you want, power rankings or whatever you want to call it, because he is now riding a three-game win streak, doing it with authority here, uh, <laughs> crushing twerk and bowl cuts. Final score, uh, let's see. I think Twerken had Fozzie Whitaker still to go on Monday night, while Gags was finished at... He he finished out after Sunday with 210.45, so he was over 200. He might have been uh, the highest highest score of the week. I don't think the detonators were quite able to get up there. Um, but yeah, almost a 100-point victory, 90 points from Gags to Riches here. Three-game winning streak, like I think like I said. Um, quarterbacks, Dalton versus Osweiler. Uh Andy Dalton, almost 54 points from him, as I think the Cal or the Bengals, I should say, were trailing, tw I think, 28 to nothing at one point from the Cowboys, which means garbage time uh, stats all over the place from Andy Dalton there. As for Osweiler, he had a tough matchup at Minnesota. He got you just under 30 points, so big difference there. Wide receivers... Gags had Hopkins, Beckham, and Demarius Thomas. Uh, <laughs> let's see, Hopkins and Beckham, exactly the same. Five for 56 and a touchdown. <laughs> well, actually, uh, all three of them had five catches. Uh, Demarius Thomas only had 49 yards and a touchdown. So, so almost the exact same score from each of your wide receivers. So 16 and 16 and 16 is uh, 48, right? So um, yeah, about 48, 49 points from your three running three three wide receivers. I should I should say. While as for Twerkin, he had Edelman, Antonio Brown, and Victor Cruz. Edelman five for 35, only eight and a half. Uh, Antonio Brown nine for 78 and a touchdown. So 22.8, but Victor Cruz, uh, big zero from him. So only a little over 30 from your three wide receivers combined. Running backs, Gags had Ezekiel Elliott and Theo Riddick. Uh, Riddick didn't do, do too much on the ground, but he did catch two touchdowns, making up for those lost receiving stats. Uh, Elliott, he had 134 yards rushing and two more touchdowns. So he got you about 25, 26 points there. Uh, I'm not sure what the uh, exact total was because I'm not sure what Riddick's rushing total was here. But uh, it, it was probably so it was at least about 50, 50, I would say close to 50 points there from your three or your two running backs combined. While Twerkin had Frank Gore and Jarek McKinnon. Gore, 75 yards. Um, McKinnon, oh, let's see, 36. So about 11 points from your two running backs. Uh, let's see, tight ends. Jason Witten versus Zach Miller. Uh, Miller doubles up Witten, 7.3 to 14.3. Well, almost doubles them up to be technical. Uh, let's see. Then we had McCoy versus Fozzie Whitaker. Looks like McCoy had just under 21 points. Thanks to over 100, looks like, well, not over exactly, 150 rushing yards. While Fozzie Whitaker, 
uh, 45 yards, one catch for 10. He got you 6.4. Kickers, uh, this one actually was crazily in favor of Twerkin, as Adam Vinatieri kicked several field goals. Uh, they were all 40 and 50 yard field goals. Yahoo says 22. I think it was more like 23 or 24. Um, and Gostowski, only one field goal and a couple PATs. I think he missed another field goal. Uh, defense, New England versus Cincinnati. Like I said, Cincinnati got beat up pretty bad. They I think they said when I was talking about Andy Dalton that they were down 28 to nothing. Um, they lost the game. They had one sack, one turnover, didn't do too good. Yahoo says four. Uh, it was probably maybe seven, something something right around there. Um, and New England, they did pretty well against Cleveland. They had a safety. They had a turnover. Didn't give up a whole lot of points. Yahoo says 16. It was, I want to say, closer to at least 20, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, I can never quite remember. Off the top of my head, exactly what the total is, but no, it definitely went up a little bit. And that was enough. So, <laughs> so when you get 50 points from your quarterback, 50 points from your running backs, <laughs> uh, let's see, Six, what, 60, 70 points from your, no, 50 points, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was 50 points. <laughs> okay, 50 points from your quarterback, 50 points from your wide receivers, 50 points from your running backs, uh, 20 from your flex, 20 from your t uh, defense, you're going to go over 200 points and probably defeat your opponent pretty handily, which is what happened here as Twerkin, he will drop to 1-4 and four, while Gags to Riches, the pony boy, uh, he will move up to 3-2, and two. so it said riding that three-game winning streak. Uh, so that's pretty much it, I think, for the week. Um, let me see what Graham Gano ended up with. Looks like he ended up with only one point. So, um, what did I say Quit Rogers had? Uh, 13? 13.1, something like that. Uh, so, I think... Thanks to that missed field goal by Gano, I think New Gods Mad Titans will actually be the team who just barely uh, gets eliminated from the knockout pool this week. But I will definitely get back into it and confirm that for sure. So that's pretty much it here for week five. Another uh, good one in the books. Kind of interesting. Uh, frustrating for me. <laughs> I feel like I can say that for sure. I know nobody cares, but uh, <laughs> doing well uh, every week, but not finding a way to win. Uh, <laughs> so I said the, the defending champion Isotopes dropped to one and four, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, so really, I, I, I blame Detling. I can think of no other way because he is the one who picked the schedule by the 11 times shuffling it up. So I only have him to blame. <laughs> on my futili our futility this season. So, all right, that's it, everyone. Thank you. Good luck to everybody, and see you back here next week.